In 2018, Yamaha promised offshore boaters a revolution. A 425 horsepower Titan, armed with direct fuel injection, electric steering, and enough brain power to outthink any wave. The official story unmatched power, unrivaled technology, and a new era of dominance on the water. But beneath the marketing glare, a bold gamble simmered. A $50,000 engine so advanced, even a single grain of debris could bring it to its knees. Was the Yamaha 425 XTO offshore a masterpiece that changed boating forever, or did the ambition to lead the pack unleash problems no one saw coming? The Shocking Truth Behind Yamaha 425 XTO Offshore outboards is far more complicated than you've been told. And what happened next will make you rethink everything about high horsepower outboards. Yamaha didn't whisper their arrival, they roared it. June 2018, Miami. The 425 XTO offshore thundered onto the scene, a 5.6 liter V8 promising 425 horsepower and a future where offshore power belonged to Yamaha. This wasn't just another outboard. It was a challenge to every rival, every tradition, every old-school mechanic who thought they'd seen it all. The press releases called it a revolution, direct fuel injection, electric steering, digital throttle, and a fully integrated control system. No more crawling under the transom to change gear oil. Now you could do it from inside the boat. No more hydraulic lines or cable clutter. Just pure electric precision all managed by a brain more advanced than some cars. Unmatched power and technology, Yamaha declared, a new era of offshore dominance. Dealers lined up, boat builders scrambled to redesign transoms. The price tag? $50,000 per engine. Quad setups could push a boat's power package past $200,000. Yamaha's Hamamatsu engineers, the same minds behind decades of reliability, bet their reputation on a moonshot. The XTO wasn't just about muscle. It was about making every other outboard look obsolete. In the months that followed, glossy ads and dockside demos painted a picture of effortless speed, digital control, and the kind of luxury that made even seasoned captains stare. The message was clear. If you wanted the biggest, the smartest, the most advanced engine on the water, there was only one name to call. But behind the curtain of corporate confidence, questions lingered. Could this much technology survive the salt, the pounding, the chaos of real offshore life? Yamaha had thrown down the gauntlet. Now the world was watching to see if the XTO would deliver. Yamaha's leadership didn't just want to compete. They wanted to leapfrog the entire offshore market. At Hamamatsu, the research and development team spent years tearing down not just Mercury and Suzuki engines, but their own best V8s, searching for any weakness to exploit. The goal? Build something no one else dared attempt. That meant scrapping old playbooks and betting on a clean sheet design with no safety net. Direct fuel injection, never before seen at this scale in an outboard. Electric steering, fully integrated, no hydraulics, no cables. Gear lube changed from inside the boat, not under it. Every feature was a risk, every shortcut rejected. The pressure was real. Mercury's 400 Verado had set the pace, and Yamaha's reputation for bulletproof reliability was suddenly a double-edged sword. Going bold meant risking that legacy. Internal debates dragged on for months. Should they gamble on saltwater resilience, knowing that a single corrosion failure could sink years of trust? Engineers argued over tiny details. Gasket materials, sensor placement, how much tech was too much for the open sea. It wasn't just about horsepower. Yamaha wanted to own the future of offshore boating, even if it meant breaking from their own cautious tradition. The XTO's multi-year development became a high-wire act, with every decision scrutinized for what could go wrong. By 2018, the gamble was locked in. The world would get a glimpse of what happens when engineering ambition outruns the familiar and whether the ocean would play along. 
Direct fuel injection wasn't just an upgrade for the Yamaha 425 XTO, it was a total reimagining of how marine engines deliver power. Under the cowl, a five-pump system works in stages. First, an electric lift pump draws fuel from the tank. Then, two electric pumps inside the vapor separator tank kick in, feeding the engine as RPMS climb. Finally, a pair of mechanical high-pressure pumps spinning at engine speed force fuel into the rails at nearly 2,900 PSY. That's almost double what you'd find on most outboards, and it's all about atomizing fuel for maximum punch and efficiency. Every drop of gasoline is delivered through solenoid injectors, each one firing with precision measured in microns. The tolerances are so tight, a single grain of grit or a hint of water can jam an injector or pit a seal. Yamaha's engineers went all in on corrosion resistance, using stainless steel and specialty coatings on the rails and pump internals. The cylinder walls themselves are plasma-fused, no sleeves, just an ultra-hard surface that shrugs off scuffing. On paper, it's a fortress against salt and ethanol, built to survive the harshest marine environments. But the reality is, this much pressure comes with a price. The fuel system is unforgiving. Miss a filter change, run old gas, or let water slip past the separator, and the consequences can be brutal. High-pressure injector replacements run $500 to $800 each. A failed pump? $1,500 to $2,500 plus hours of labor. Service intervals are strict. Filters every 100 hours. Injectors and pumps checked by the book. Dealers warn that even a small lapse can mean limp mode, hard starting, or a dead engine miles offshore. Technicians talk about the XTO's direct injection system with a mix of respect and anxiety. The system's mean time between failures sits around 800 to 1500 hours, but those numbers drop fast if fuel quality slips or maintenance is skipped. Field reports show a 2 to 4% failure rate for injectors or pumps in the first 300 hours, higher than Yamaha's older V8s. Diagnosing a problem means proprietary scan tools, live pressure readings, and sometimes full bench tests. No shortcuts, no quick fixes. It's a paradox. The same microscopic tolerances that give the XTO its edge also leave it exposed. Owners get diesel-like torque and instant throttle, but they're always one bad batch of gas or a missed service away from a four-figure repair. In the world of high-performance boating, that's the trade-off. Raw power balanced on a razor's edge where even the smallest contaminant can bring a $50,000 engine to a halt. Electric steering swept away the old world of pumps and hoses. The XTO's midsection holds a direct drive electric motor, taking commands from the helm through a CAN bus network. No more fluid leaks or sluggish response, just crisp computer-driven movement. Sensors track torque and position, relaying data to the control unit hundreds of times each second. Yamaha's Helm Master system orchestrates it all, running throttle, shift, and steering with a level of precision that once belonged to luxury cars. Joystick docking and autopilot are now standard, shrinking the gap between offshore muscle and city driving ease. Yet every wire and sensor introduces new risks. The CAN bus backbone is fast, but sensitive to voltage drops, corrosion, and the tiniest flaw in a connector. Silicone gaskets and weatherproof coatings guard each junction, but salt water is relentless. Dealers have traced steering failures to a single corroded pin buried in a multi-pin plug, or to moisture sneaking up a rigging tube after a rushed repair. When the system senses a fault or loses communication, it can trigger alarms, limp mode, or even lock the helm entirely, leaving the captain with a frozen wheel until a technician resets the software or swaps out a harness. Yamaha included a manual override hidden behind a panel. A mechanical lever lets you force the engine to turn with a wrench, a throwback to simpler times. It's not meant for everyday use, especially not in rough seas, but it stands as a quiet acknowledgement 
that even the most advanced electronics can't always outsmart the ocean. The gear lube system marks another shift. Instead of crawling under the transom, oil changes happen from inside the boat. The old drain plug is gone, replaced by a sealed in-water system. The fill port sits high, protected by a gasketed cap. On paper, it's a leap forward. No more greasy bilges or seized bolts. But if salt water slips past a seal, there's nowhere for it to drain. Corrosion can start deep inside the gear case, hidden until the next scheduled service. Some owners have found milky oil or pitted gears after just a season, especially in heavy salt. Dealers sometimes recommend pulling the prop and checking for leaks more often than Yamaha's official schedule. Every sealed connector and harness is designed to keep the elements out, but complexity breeds vulnerability. A single drop of water in a CAN bus Y connector or a warped cowling gasket can trigger faults only dealer software can clear. Maintenance now means diagnostics and firmware updates as much as turning wrenches. The XTO's integration promises power and control, but every advance brings new failure modes and a growing reliance on dealer expertise. The ocean, as ever, punishes overconfidence. Guardian mode sounds reassuring on a spec sheet, automatic protection when the engine senses trouble. But for offshore captains, it can mean the difference between a safe run home and a nightmare drifting miles from land. Ask anyone who's had a sensor go sideways 40 miles out. The engine doesn't argue, doesn't negotiate. It just drops to idle, locks out throttle, and leaves you dead in the water while the horizon starts to feel very far away. Captain Laura Pena remembers the moment. July, off Key West. Her charter group had just started hauling in mahi when a warning flashed on the display. Water pressure sensor fault. No overheating, no smoke, just a computer insisting something was wrong. The 425 XTO dropped into guardian mode, ignoring every throttle command. She radioed for help as the wind picked up. By the time the Coast Guard arrived, the fish were gone, her clients were seasick, and the engine was stuck at idle, refusing to reset. Back at the dock, the diagnosis was brutal. The sensor, a $150 part, had failed, but getting to it meant hours of labor. While the cowling was off, the dealer found early corrosion in the lower unit. Repairs, parts, and lost charters stacked up. The final bill landed near $18,000, not counting the three months she spent off the water waiting for parts and technician availability. That's three months of canceled trips, angry customers, and a captain questioning every promise Yamaha made about reliability. For commercial operators, it's not just a nuisance. Every day lost is real money, sometimes thousands in missed bookings. The technology that's supposed to protect the boat can end up putting livelihoods on the line. And when a sensor, a wire, or a software glitch can strand a captain, the stakes hit home in ways that never show up in glossy brochures. The XTO's guardian mode is a safety net, but for some, it's a trap that closes with no warning, leaving only the long wait for a tow and a repair bill that stings long after the engine is running again. Authorized Yamaha dealers found themselves in uncharted waters. The 425 XTO's arrival meant more than just a new engine on the lot. It demanded a complete overhaul of how service was done. Specialized diagnostic tools, proprietary software, and new training requirements became the new normal. For many shops, the learning curve was steep. Early on, technicians scrambled to keep up as electronic steering systems and high-pressure fuel rails replaced familiar mechanical parts. Routine jobs ballooned into multi-hour diagnostics, and even seasoned mechanics sometimes needed factory support to clear a stubborn fault code. Part shortages only made things worse. Owners waited weeks, sometimes months, for a back-ordered sensor or a replacement gear case. Service bays filled with sidelined XTOs, each one representing a missed charter, a canceled fishing trip, or a lost sale. Dealers faced angry calls and impossible schedules, especially in high-volume markets like the Gulf Coast and Florida Keys.
one dealer representative put it bluntly. We had engines stacked up waiting for parts. Customers were furious, and there was nothing we could do. The cost of ownership quickly became a sore spot. Scheduled maintenance alone could run over $2,000 per year, and that's if nothing went wrong. A failed high-pressure pump or corroded lower unit could double or triple the bill overnight. For quad engine setups, three-year total cost of ownership estimates reached $45,000 before factoring in lost income from downtime. Owners who once bragged about bulletproof Yamaha reliability now found themselves budgeting for diagnostics, firmware updates, and parts that only a certified dealer could source. Independent mechanics, long trusted for routine work, were locked out by proprietary software and tool requirements. The XTO's digital integration meant even simple fixes often required dealer intervention. For some, the promise of cutting-edge tech was overshadowed by the reality of long wait lists and rising costs. Dealers, caught between Yamaha's ambitions and real-world frustration, watched as some longtime customers drifted to rival brands with simpler service and faster turnaround. The XTO was changing the game, not just for boaters, but for everyone who made their living keeping engines on the water. Ask a Yamaha certified technician about the 425 XTO, and you'll get a look that says it all. Underneath the marketing, the engine's complexity is no secret in the service bay. Firmware updates arrive quietly, often after hours of troubleshooting a steering lock or a sensor that won't clear. Early production models saw a string of these silent fixes. Updated seals for the gear lube system, revised software to stop false guardian mode alarms, and new connector kits for harnesses that didn't hold up in real salt water. One independent technician in Florida puts it bluntly, it's a marvel until you have to fix it. The smallest breach, a pinhole in a connector, a warped gasket can take the whole system down. And if you're not running the latest firmware, you're chasing ghosts. He's seen engines sidelined for months waiting on parts Yamaha didn't anticipate running out. For every leap in design, there's a trade-off in service. The XTO isn't just hard to work on. It's hard to keep running right unless you're armed with factory tools, dealer codes, and a tolerance for the unexpected. The debate around the Yamaha 425 XTO offshore isn't going away. Every new firmware update, every revised seal or sensor, is another chapter in an unfinished story. Some owners swear by the engine's power and digital finesse, calling it the future of offshore boating. Others point to corrosion, downtime, and the price of keeping up as proof that the XTO is just too much machine for the real world. Forums fill with stories, some celebrating flawless seasons, others tallying up repair bills and lost weekends. Yamaha keeps refining, promising that each tweak brings the XTO closer to its promise. But the question lingers, did they build a masterpiece ahead of its time or create a cautionary tale about pushing technology past what salt water and time will allow? The answer depends on who you ask and maybe on what happens the next time you turn the key. In 2018, Yamaha unveiled the 425 XTO offshore boasting 425 horsepower from a 5.6-liter V8, its most advanced outboard to date. The promise was clear, unmatched power, digital precision, and integrated steering. But the facts reveal a deeper story. Owners have faced sensor-triggered shutdowns that led to losses exceeding $18,000 and average repair costs topping $2,000 per incident. Specialized tools and dealer-only servicing have made maintenance more complex and costly. Ongoing firmware revisions and quiet design tweaks show that reliability concerns have never been fully resolved. Yet critical documents about engineering changes remain undisclosed, and Yamaha has not released comprehensive long-term failure rates. The XTO offshore stands as both a technical marvel and a cautionary tale. Its legacy is still being written, one shaped by bold innovation, real-world consequences, 
and unanswered questions that continue to impact boaters and the industry alike. 